Thank you. So despite India's apparent connection today, it's actually a separate continent. And that separate continent of India is slamming into Asia. And just think about a dog hitting a carpet running in a hallway. It crumples up. Well, that's what the Himalayan mountains are. And they're being totally smushed up. Well, they have been squished so much that they can no longer take all of the force of India hitting Asia. So approximately 10 million years ago, some of that squishing propagated back to Kyrgyzstan and is forming the Tian Shan Mountains of Kyrgyzstan in China. Now, why should we care about that? Well, as you can imagine, if you're really, really squishing rocks, you get a really lot of earthquake faults which means Kyrgyzstan is the single most seismically active or earthquake prone country in the entire world. For a country that's rapidly trying to industrialize, build infrastructure, and has a growing population, this is a big problem. Now, in the US, if we were going to assess the risk posed by a particular earthquake fault, one of the big things we have to do is figure out how old the fault is. When did this fault form? And how active has it been? Well, in the US, we can just go out and date radiometrically an ash. There are no volcanoes in Central Asia. So in a really roundabout way, that's where I, the paleontologist, come in. I collect fossils in central Kyrgyzstan and compare them to fossils from Mongolia and China and Pakistan that are more well known to try and establish how old those individual fossils are. Now, the catch on this, if I find a really cute rhino like this Chylotherium you see here, one of the fossils I have, it might have a wide range of time that it's known from. It shows up about 12 million years ago and goes extinct about 7 million years ago. That's not a great resolution for how old a particular fault is. But instead, if I combine my rhino fossils with a particular species of horse called, uh, genus called Hyperion, and then this really cool little tiny mongoose tooth, you can start to have these different ranges that only have a small amount of overlap, and I can come up with really accurate age estimates for how old each of the layers these fossils come from. So I'm using what's called biostratigraphy, comparing fossils, to determine how old and how active these faults are in Kyrgyzstan. Now my data is going to be directly incorporated into helping make hazard maps for Kyrgyzstan. Now as if that wasn't fun enough, the other thing I'm doing is looking at how climate and environment has changed through time using the changing communities of animals. And this is important for looking at why do we have the animals and the climate we have today in Asia? And what can the past say about that? Thank you.